Hello, I am Mrs. Nita Olude, and I am so delighted that you have chosen to spend a portion of your precious moments to study the Word of God with us. The DVD presentation you are about to watch is a message from my husband, Mr. Lynn Olude, an anointed teacher of God's Word who has literally transformed my life. Please get a notepad and pen and take notes because you will learn something unique that will change your life for the better. Your notes will also come handy during the quiz time sessions, so be sure to take notes and get ready for this adventure in God's holy word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord for another opportunity to study His Word and to learn at His feet. Uh, we appreciate the mercies of the Lord in our lives today. It is about 9.49 a.m. June 21st, 2015. And uh, we want to conclude a series we started a few weeks ago concerning spiritual groceries today and this is the fourth part of the series concerning spiritual groceries and we're trusting that God's gonna help us wrap it up today uh, with regards to what we started studying spiritual groceries part four Spiritual Groceries Part 4 uh, Four weeks ago, we talked about the first part of this series of messages called Spiritual Groceries Part 1 and we made it clear in that study that uh, the, the Word of God can be classified into different kinds of spiritual groceries and just like we can have natural groceries, we can have uh, water in the realm of the natural, we can have milk in the realm of the natural, we can have meat or solid food in the realm of the natural, and even sometimes medicine in the realm of the natural. Um, there are pointers in the Word of God that lets us know that let us know that certain aspects of the Word of God can be categorized into these different categories of uh, groceries as well. We can have the water of the Word, we can have the milk of the Word, we can have the meat of the Word, or solid food of the Word, and at the same time we can have something we call spiritual medicine. And the first part of the series uh, concentrated on the water aspect of the Word of God, what the water aspect of the Word of God is, so why we need water, and um, how to identify scriptures that we can use as the water aspect of the Word of God. The second aspect of the study, we concentrated on what the milk of the Word is all about, uh, why we need the milk of the Word, and how to identify scriptures that we can call the milk of the Word. And the third aspect of the study concentrated on the solid food of the Word of God, why we need solid food, and how to identify scriptures that we can call solid food or the meat of the Word of God. And today we're going to be identifying the last part of what we call spiritual groceries, which is spiritual medicine. Spiritual medicine. When we're talking about spiritual medicine, we need to appreciate that just like we can have natural medicine to overcome natural sickness, we can have spiritual medicine to overcome spiritual sickness as well. So then the question is, what is sickness? What is spiritual sickness? What do we mean when we're talking about people are sick spiritually? Um, a dictionary defines sickness as not being in proper condition. It is an aberration of normality. It is a deviation from wholeness. A sickness is something that is not ordinary. If you've got an individual hay ear and the person is acting sick, 
uh, the person is deviating, or his or her body is deviating from what the body was created to function as. That is sickness. If you were uh, walking around and your legs are functioning properly, you shouldn't have a ache in your leg. But then if you start feeling a ache in your leg, your, your body wasn't designed for that ache. Sickness is an aberration of normality. And in the same way, spiritual sickness is going to be like that. And to help us understand what uh, this aberration is all about, God gives a categorical example of how sick the nation of Israel was because of their sinful condition. In the book of Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 1, let's look at it. Isaiah chapter 1, and from verse 1. Isaiah 1.1, 1, 1, it says, The vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah son of Amos saw during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they've rebelled against me. The hawks knows his master. The donkey is owner's manger, but Israel does not know know me. My people do not understand. Ah, a sinful nation, a people loaded with guilt, a brood of evil doers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the law of the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on it. Why should you be beaten any more? Why do you persist in rebellion? Your whole head is sick, and your whole heart is afflicted. From the sore of your foot to the top of your head, there is no soundness, only wounds. God compares the rebelliousness or the rebellion of the nation of Israel to the fact that they're not acting normally. He says, the ox, in his normal condition, he knows his owner. The donkey understands his manger. But you guys are acting up normally in here. You don't recognize the one who called you God. You're sick in your head. Sickness is an aberration of normality. There is something more normal about sickness. It is when people hear the word of God. And they do not have the ability to respond favorably to what they hear to yield and harvest for the Word of God, they are not acting normally. Why is that so? The reason that is so is because man ordinarily was created to be in the image of God. So any mention of the word God to man should make man respond favorably toward God. So if man is not responding favorably toward God, there's something wrong with the heart of that kind of a person. And that's the reason the Bible says in the book of Titus, in Titus chapter 1 verse 16, that some people are unfit to do any good work. Why are they unfit to do any good work? They are not able to respond favorably to uh, the call of their creator. They are sick in their hearts. So we understand what sickness is right now. Sickness is an aberration of normality. It is a deviation from wholeness. It's when something is not in proper condition. So then the question is, what is a proper condition? What is a healthy heart? What do we mean when we're talking about wholeness and a healthy heart? A heart that is able to yield and harvest for the seed of the Word of God is is a proper heart it is a whole heart and the reason for that is because the word of god says in mark chapter 4 let's look at it again we talked about it extensively in previous studies but in mark chapter 4 he bears some kind of repetition for us to take a look at it in mark chapter 4 the bible says the soil by itself brings forth a harvest in mark chapter 4 and in verse 28 that says all by itself the soil produces a harvest first the grain first the stalk and then the head and then the full kernel in the head 
and as soon as the grape grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest is come. So the, this scripture lets us know that ordinarily the soil should be able to produce a harvest. So a picture of a proper heart is a heart that is able to produce a harvest for the seed of the word of God, which we're going to be getting into later uh, to understand those different characteristics. So when, when the human heart is not able to produce a seed, is to produce a harvest for the seed of the word of God, that that heart is sick. Uh, we said before that uh, the, the reason uh, man is is is, is uh, required to to yield a harvest for the seed of the word of God is because man was ordinarily created to be in the image and in the likeness of God, and the word of God lets us know that God created man in His own image and after His own likeness. And we can see that scripture in the book of Genesis, in Genesis chapter one, and in verse twenty six. Uh, the Bible records that man was created to be in the image and in the likeness of God. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So God lets us know in here that man was created to be in the image of God. We were created to be in the likeness of God. So ordinarily, a man should be responsive to his creator. We were created in the image and in the likeness of God, we should be able to respond intelligently and favorably to the cause of our Creator if we're going to be acting right. But if we're not responding favorably to the cause of our Creator, uh, it means something is wrong with our hearts. Something is, 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 is not quite right with our hearts. So, a picture of a proper heart is a heart that can respond favorably to the cause of his or her creator. It is a heart that can yield a harvest for the seed of the word of God. It is a heart that says yes when God says yes. It is a heart that says no when God says no. It is a heart that can yield a harvest for the seed of the word of God. That is what a proper heart is all about. Um... Another scripture in the book of Luke, we're going to be looking, looking at all the gospel accounts to actually understand the characteristics of a, of a good heart um, in here. So if a proper heart is, is a heart that is able to yield a harvest for the seed of the word of God, if it is a heart that is able to say yes when God says yes and no when God says no, what are the qualities of that kind of a heart? What are the characteristics of that kind of a heart? And Jesus talks about the qualities of those, the, that kind of a heart in his parable, the parable of the sower. When Jesus uh, gave the account of the parable of the sower in Luke chapter 8 and Mark chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to look at those parables to actually understand certain qualities of the good soil so we can appreciate what proper, uh, proper health, proper spiritual health is meant, meant to be. So let's look at Luke chapter 8 for, um, just to start with. In Luke chapter 8 and in verse 15. Luke 8 and verse 15 lets us know the qualities of a, of a good heart. In Luke chapter 8 and verse 15 the Bible says, But those seeds on the good soil stand for those with an honest and a good heart. Hear the word of God, retain it, and by patience bear forth fruits. They hear the word of God with an honest heart. They hear the word of God with a good heart. They hear the word of God, they retain it, and with patience they are able to bring forth a harvest for the seed of the word of God. So that scripture lets us know certain qualities of uh, the good soil over there. The good soil has honesty. In its, heart, in its heart. And there is another critical quality of uh, the good soil that the, the account in the book of Luke um, actually calls goodness. It says the good soil in a good, 
in a honest and in a good heart. So we understand what honesty, the attitude of honesty, but uh, Luke didn't do a good job in letting us know the goodness aspect. The other goodness aspect of the good soil that he was referring to over there. So to appreciate the goodness aspect that Luke was talking about in here, let's look at another rendition of this same parable according to the gospel in the book of Mark. Let's look at the book of Mark just to start with. Uh, once again, in the book of Mark, in Mark chapter 4, the same parable uh, based on Mark's uh, rendition. In Mark chapter 4 and in verse 20, it says, Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop 30, 60, even 100 times what was sown in it. So the, 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 this, this scripture says in here that a good soil represents people who hear the word of God. They accept it, and then they produce a harvest. They hear the word of God, they accept it, they produce a harvest. They hear the word of God, they accept it, and they produce a harvest. So the goodness aspect of the word of God that, that uh, Jesus was talking about is being able to accept the word of God. Is being able to receive the word of God. And the question is, what kind of attitudes will position people to receive the Word of God? The Bible lets us know the attitude that will position people to receive the Word of God in two scriptures. In James chapter 1 and verse 20, the Bible says, You receive the Word of God with meekness, which is able to save your soul. Let's look at it. In James chapter 1 and verse 20, it lets us know a critical characteristic of a human heart that will position the person to receive the Word of God. It is meekness. Meekness is important to bear a harvest for the seed of the Word of God. In James chapter 1 and verse 20, uh, let me see if I got that verse of Scripture right. James chapter 1. Let's start reading from verse 19. It says, My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become, to become hangry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word of God planted in you which can save you it's uh, verse 21 actually that talks about the point i want to bring out in here so this this verse of scripture lets us know that to to be able to receive the word of god you need to exercise yourself in what we call humility i think the king james version of it calls it meekness but meekness and humility are synonymous synonyms so uh, the, the goodness aspect of the word of god that will help people to receive the word of god to produce a harvest for the seed of the word of god is meekness another aspect of goodness that jesus was talking about in here can be understood by looking at uh, the scripture in the book of mark in mark 11 23 and 24 the bible says whatsoever you desire when you pray believe that you've received it and you will have it so being able to believe the word of god having an attitude of faith in god to believe the word of god is another goodness quality of the good soil that made the soil good so the soil can yield a harvest for the seed of the word of God so through the scriptures in Luke chapter 8 and in the book of Mark and in the book of James and in the book of uh, 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 math in the book of Mark Mark 11 we can see that the goodness aspect of the good soil that Jesus was talking about include meekness or humility and having faith in God and based on the evidence of the book of Luke, we understand that what the first quality of the good soil is to be honest. So based on the scriptures, we can see there are three cardinal attitudes that a good soil needs to have to become a proper soil, to become a proper heart. It needs to have honesty, it needs to have humility, and it needs to have faith toward God. So if those are the qualities of a good soil, a proper condition, uh, a healthy heart, honesty, humility, and faith, then what is spiritual sickness? The exact opposite. So if wholeness 
in the human heart is going to be equivalent to honesty is going to be equivalent to humility is going to be equivalent to a faith oriented disposition towards his creator then what is sickness going to be equivalent to is going to be equivalent to the exact opposite of those things that are made for goodness is going to be equivalent to dishonesty is going to be equivalent to pride is going to be equivalent to doubt and fear and unbelief those things are sickness, sicknesses, conditions of sicknesses that will prevent people from yielding a harvest for the seed of the word of God. A dishonest person can yield a harvest for the seed of the word of God. A prideful person cannot yield a harvest for the seed of the word of God. A doubtful person cannot yield a harvest for the seed of the word of God. Those conditions are sickness in people's hearts. And that's the reason the Bible says again the book of Matthew in Matthew chapter 13, uh, Matthew's account of the same book of, uh, of the same parable of the sower, it records that uh, the, one of the soils that Jesus talked about not being good, the path like soil, in Matthew 13, the Bible says they hear the word of God but they cannot understand it. Now why can't they understand the word of God even after they heard it? The reason they can't understand the word of God is because only the meek will be taught the ways of the Lord. So evidently the path like that Jesus was talking about in that verse of scripture was not exercising himself or herself in meekness and therefore he couldn't understand the word of God he couldn't be ta taught the ways of the Lord and then the devil came and snatched away the seed that was sown in his heart again the guy was not able to yield a harvest for the seed of the word of God because of his attitude of pride because he is sick in his heart so we're, tr we're, tr we're trying to understand what uh, what spiritual sickness is all about spiritual sickness is a heart that is not whole it is a heart that is devoid of honesty it is a heart that is devoid of what it takes to bear a harvest for the seed of the word of God that is what spiritual sickness is all about and God identifies certain portions of his word that we can use to rectify this uh, condition of, uh, of our hearts to improve the grade and the qualities of our heart God identifies certain things that we can do that we can use practical strategies that we can use to rectify the condition of the human heart hallelujah glory to God hallelujah so we've understood what it takes right now to have a proper heart what it takes to have a proper heart is to have honesty in your heart to have humility in your heart and to have a disposition that moves in the direction of God that's the way God created man because we were created to be in his image if you want to know what a proper condition is honesty of heart humility of heart and faith toward God and all those things are different levels um, honesty humility faith level one honesty humility faith level two and we did an extensive study concerning the concept of these critical attitudes um, in a book called the overcomer secret and if uh, people can't lay their hands on it they, they would really appreciate all the different levels of honesty humility and faith that we identified in that book and we placed articles and resources on heroesmart.com as well to help people understand what it takes to operate in these different levels of attitudes it is important for us to understand that so a proper heart a healthy heart is a hell is a, is a heart that has honesty in it it is a heart that has humility in it it is a heart that has faith HHF we came up with that acronym while writing that book the overcomer secret HHF so you want to check if you're holding holding healthy ask yourself do you have HHF do you have honesty in your heart do you have humility in your heart do you have faith in your heart are you prideful are you dishonest those attitudes are critical before you can even get started those attitudes predate being exposed to the milk of the word to the water of the word or to the meat of the word every seed of the word of God that is planted in a dishonest heart is going to be truncated by pride or dishonesty or uh, lack of faith toward God before the seed of the word of God can actually yield, yield a harvest the grade of the human heart has to be at least the 30-fold grade that Jesus talked about concerning the good soil in the parable of the sower we need honesty in our hearts we need humility in our hearts and we need faith in our hearts as well
All right, take a deep breath. Go through your notes for a moment and answer the following questions. Question one, which set of attitudes constitute a spiritual sickness? A, dishonesty, pride, unbelief. B, despondency, hunger, thirst. C, weakness, timidity, faith. Or D, not really sure. The answer is A, dishonesty, pride, and unbelief. Question two, the good soil described by Jesus in the parable of the sower possesses honesty, humility, and faith. Is this A, true, or B, false? The answer is A, true. I trust you got the answers right. Now, let's proceed to listen to the rest of the message. <laughs> 